obviously, you know, I, I am a, I, I believe in being direct and I think it is totally fair to say, some, to, to reach out to someone perhaps you haven't spoken to in 10 years and say, I dropped the ball. I want to reconnect. I want you back in my life. And yes, it's scary because you risk them either not responding or saying no, but you're no worse off, right? What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, first of all, give yourself some grace, okay? We've just been through living hell, um, and some people have suffered enormous losses. So, you know, don't push yourself if you're not ready. Okay, that, that's number one. Uh, and every single person experienced this pandemic in a different light. So I think- Absolutely. It's just, right? I mean, I think we, we all have to, to take that in. Two, if you are introverted, a couple of tips. And I have to tell you, in my next life, I'm going to be introverted. Like, I fantasize about being an introvert. I don't even know how to be an introvert. But that doesn't mean there are times I don't want to hide in the bathroom. Okay? So, th so th there's a difference. But I will say, with the pre-planning, you can scaffold your event. In other words, you can you can plan who you you are going to meet. And this is also that time where thinking about in advance what what you have to offer. Um, and in the book, I actually in one chapter have ten canned questions that you can have in your back pocket for when you're terrified. But I will say, go with the notion. I call it the tram triumvirate, which is almost like the power of three. Go with the goal of meeting three people, sharing three things and learning three things. And then you can go hide in the bathroom. But in other words, that's doable, feasible, manageable. Um, and you know, again, what do I know? I'm not an introvert, but to me, that seems like a way to kind of like, oh, I can do this. And remember, if you're asking the questions, guess what? You can sit back and listen. You don't have to be the one doing the blah, blah, which again, for someone who may be shy or introverted, meaning, and those two are separate, can be a very comfortable place to be. Absolutely. And as someone who's introverted, it's exactly what I try to do is, is small chunk it. I've hung out yeah. at large events with extroverts who have endless amounts of energy to talk to anyone and run the room. I know that's not me. And yeah. my goal going in is one great conversation because that great conversation leads to that person introducing you to everyone that yeah. they know. And then it creates a ripple effect which is a lot easier to manage than memorizing everyone's name, getting everyone to laugh, being the life of the party if you don't feel that you have that in you. Well, I, that intentionality is going to give you more rewards going to that networking event than being able to just talk to everybody but not remember anything yeah. that you've mentioned yeah. or you've just been an autopilot. And it's also not to say that introverts want to hide in the bathroom. They just it's, it's an overwhelming stimulus. There's a lot going <laughs> on. It takes a lot for them to, to manage that. And they yeah. need to recharge but it's not that they're ineffective or they're terrified to be there. It's just, yeah. they just can't deal with lots of stimuli. And that intentionality is great. The three by three by three is, that's so easy to remember. And yeah. it gives you ample things to focus on and, and, and get from that experience. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. One thing that has definitely come out of the pandemic, and I was just talking about this yesterday in our X Factor Accelerator, a lot of our clients are top performers. They put their head down during the pandemic. They threw themselves into work. They obviously were not going out and socializing as much as they would like, so they really focused on their career. And now that we're coming out the other side, they feel like they've lost connection with people in their lives and they're nervous around reconnecting yeah. as in, well, I haven't spoke to this person in six months, a year. How do I do that? How do I go about reconnecting with people in my life that for various reasons, I just wasn't as connected to as I was in the past. What are your strategies or tips as someone who is a super connector for maintaining these great relationships that we have in our life? Well, there's two things. One in terms of reconnecting and we have the perfect excuse. 
we've just been through this ridiculous horror show. Let's ring it for all it's worth and reach out to people and you know what? Use a darn pandemic, right? I mean, why not? Obviously, you know, I, I am a, I, I believe in being direct and I think it is totally fair to say, so, to, to reach out to someone perhaps you haven't spoken to in 10 years and say, I dropped the ball. I want to reconnect. I want you back in my life. And yes, it's scary because you risk them either not responding or saying no, but you're no worse off, right? So, so one, I, I'm a big believer in being direct. I also think, you know, this is also that reset moment where let's think about who do we want in our lives? And also, how are we going to try to get more diversity and inclusion in our lives, right? Because we know we're gonna learn more, we're gonna be better professionally, um, we're gonna learn more about ourselves. So, you know, that, 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 that doing that little bit, and I know I keep harboring on this, but doing a little bit of self-reflection first and thinking about why you do wanna reconnect. Now, in terms of staying connected, um, I have been on occasion called a human CRM which I don't know is a compliment or an insult, but what I do is I literally, you know when you get the brain cloud of somebody, you know, Johnny pops in my brain, and what do we typically do? We'll get to it later, right? Like, just like the dishes. But you know what? I reach out right that very second. And if I can't, I voice memo myself or I jot down. I'm a, I'm, I still very much carry around a little notepad. I know that sounds like I'm a dinosaur, but that works for me. So. To me, when people pop in my brain, I act upon it. And sometimes there's no agenda other than I'm sending some love or I want to know how you're doing. No rush, no, no, don't feel the pressure to come back to me. Or during the pandemic, it would be like, hey, don't forget about me because I live alone. I don't have family. I don't have kids. So it was my SOS. So, I, I, you know, in that way, I have kept connected with people and I've done this over the years. And what I've found and, and what we've found certainly in, in hosting Super Connectors on the podcast is much of this maintaining a network is small habits. Yeah. It's not waiting until the end of the month. It's not hours and hours of work. It's setting aside a few moments every day to collect your thoughts yeah. and habitually reach out to people. And that just thinking of you is such a powerful message. It sounds contrite, but actually people love to know that you're thinking about them. Oh my God, and it it's... gets them thinking about you and gets them opening up about yeah. what they might actually be going through or what they're really excited and happy about. Well, and people often say to me, how do you have time? And I say, well, I have time to brush my teeth. Yeah, I would put network maintenance on the same level as dental hygiene. <laughs> we all have time for both. <laughs> and we should be maintaining this network of awesome people that we've met along the way. I think it's also important to to realize the technology that we're using is just an it's an intermediate step. It is but it's but it's not creating real life memories with people that you're going to remember back on. Now you may have shared some laughs on a meme, but is 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 that an adventure? Is that a hike? Is that dinner together? Is that some drinks? Is that going on for a walk together where there is actual bonding going on and the intermediate tech um, communication is certainly distorting our views and how our relationships are and I'm curious I mean I think we're all watching to see at the end of our lives with this technology did it fill the void do we still want to reach out and and hold some of the, the people that we care most about regardless of how many messages or memes we shared back and forth and had some laughs it's going to be quite interesting and, and I, i'm the 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 data that's coming out now is certainly showing that well it's better than not being able to see somebody for months years at a time but it is it seriously filling that void mm, no. it doesn't seem no. like it I mean, the research I, I conducted, you know, when you need to have a meaningful conversation or a difficult conversation, the absolute best place to do that is in person, which of course we have not, you know, in many cases been able to do for um, a, a good chunk of the last year and a half. So um, I agree 100%. Um, where I can't imagine how, how much worse it would have felt without this kind of video that we, we now have. Oh. Yeah, can you imagine? 
Um, no. But you know, I, I agree with you. It is it is the in person human experiences that mm -hmm. that that are the, the the holy grail.